G'day, I'm John Ford for Caravan World, and we're here at Ngambi for the 2022 MSA Caravan of the Year event. Regent is one of our heritage builders with a 30-year proud history. A couple of years ago, they moved production overseas and changed to a composite body. Let's see what the judges, Tim, Caroline and Malcolm, think of this big 21-foot slide-out. Regent bought their big slide-out, the 22-footer. It's pretty new, hadn't been on the road that long. The biggest van here was pretty impressive, I reckon. 87 480 is the driveway price. It's in a very competitive high-end market there, and I think that's pretty good value, 87,000 for that van. Slide out, lots of room, a lot of innovation in there. I agree, John, there's not too many slide outs in the marketplace. You know, we know there's the Silver Line from Jayco, Crusader, there's a Winnebago that you see a few around every now and then, and they're all over 100 grand. So 87 480 is tested is pretty good. I think a slide out is always a bit of a challenge in any caravan. Get the price they've done there, I think, yes, it's definitely a good move. It's a big van. We saw you there towing it. What did you think? I thought it towed really well. Our tow had a few different conditions. We went through the township of Ngambi. We went out on the freeway at 110 with lots of road works thrown in for good measure. We did a few dirt road turning tests and along narrow country roads. So it performed really well. I don't think there were any issues. Caroline and I were in the car together. We both drove. And behind the 300 series, which is an exceptional tow vehicle, it was a little nervous around trucks. Uh, we had one overtake us and it just got a bit of a wobble, but it pretty quickly straightened up. 22 foot van, just a couple's van, so straight away you think space, but then you also add in the fact it's got a slide out and all of a sudden you've got a lot of real estate yeah. for a couple. Now it is a slightly narrow van at 22.90 or thereabouts as the body width, so it's not exactly a, a full width van like Australian built vans can be, but I think for suitability it was pretty good. Like it's not ready to spend a week off grid, but it's ready to spend a few days off grid. And I think as a blacktop tourer, that is warranted for gravel roads. But I think, uh, yeah, it's a, not a bad option actually. Moderate your driving, try, try and save a few bob on the fuel costs. You'd happily drive that thing around Australia, wouldn't you? Build quality, Mel. It's um, mainly built overseas, but finished off in Australia. Yes, it's quite interesting. I guess it doesn't have a separate frame in the construction. The frame is actually built into the composite walls, keeping the strength and weight factors quite good. I like the front and rear fiberglass mouldings. They added a bit of character to the van and the uh, so-called bus door boot with the lid actually lifts up. I thought that was an interesting little idea. Underneath the van, the chassis had a Raptor coating. I think forgivable for the price point. If you were being very particular, you notice a little bit of glue seeping out from underneath some of the laminates, a fair bit of wood shavings in some of the drawers. Perhaps the fit and finish wasn't on par with the $100,000 plus caravans that this would compete with, but again, this is twelve dollars to $13,000 less than a lot of its competition, so I think a lot of those things are forgivable. Livability, I mean, that's really where that van shines. It had features like I just mentioned, the leather lounge, the upgraded four kilo washing machine, which is bigger than, than a lot of them, the DIN stereo. It had a 32 inch TV, instantaneous hot water. Wi-Fi, I think that was another, another good feature. That 270 degree camera system, that's fantastic for parking. Yeah, when you're, when you're backing up, it's pretty amazing. Yep, you can see exactly the, where the back of the van is and what's beside the van. These guys are very big on customer care. They have the warranty section of the company set up there 24-7. They prefer, if something was to go wrong, they prefer you to go straight to the dealer. They've got 40 service centres in every state. But if you're stuck out in the middle of nowhere and something happens to go wrong, by all means, they'll let you ring anybody and they'll work with those people. But the, the warranty, five-year structural, uh, two-year manufacturing warranty, and the warranty applies so long as the van is taken on gazetted roads. So you, you can go, you know, off the tar, but it has to be gazetted. Is it the van you'd get away in the bush with him? Yeah, that's a good question, John. It has the bare minimum for what you'd want to tour Australia, the bare minimum. An astute buyer would add a little more solar and a little more battery on there, and potentially a little more water as well. And I think once you've done that, you're looking at, in a frugal way, you might get out towards five days to a week. I think the innovation on this thing probably wasn't one thing, it was a whole package of things, like the composite body structure, the slide out, and the frame sort of structure. Yeah, for me, the innovation is the way that the team have maintained the heritage of Regent. Like, Regent's a 30 plus year company. And I think, like for me, that's the big innovation, is they've kept region on the road, but made it more accessible. It'd be a really good van for a couple to head off and spend time in, whether, you know, whether they're traveling or if they go and camp up somewhere for a few weeks. It's really well put together. It's in that luxury market, and I think that it fits the bill there.